In this talk, I'm going to discuss something known as scapular humeral rhythm. It's quite a complex discussion, so I'm going to try to split it down into two or three particular areas. Now, first of all, we can look at something known as the shoulder girdle. So if you think about um, the scapula in itself, obviously with a clavicle here, the motion of a shoulder girdle, we can elevate, depress, protract, retract. And also if my hands are the two scapulae here, then we can rotate in both directions, okay? So we can go in an upward direction and a downward direction. So this is like upward rotation, and then this would be downward rotation. Add on the humerus, and then we can look at the glenohumeral joint, which is naturally the shoulder joint. And then we know that we can abduct, adduct, flex and extend, rotate internally and externally, and have horizontal motion. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is, the third part of it, like so we've got the shoulder girdle and we've got the shoulder joint, but put them together like the shoulder complex. Then if I lift my arms over my head, then that's going to be a combination of the scapula working with the humerus. It's known as a two to one ratio. So what that simply means is for two degrees of abduction of the humerus, that is one degree of scapula rotation. So it works on a two to one ratio. So if I bring my arms to 90 degrees, it's not true to say it's 90 degrees of abduction from the glenohumeral joint. It is 60 degrees of abduction and 30 degrees of scapular rotation. And also, if I bring my arm all the way up to 180, there is a 120 degree abduction from the shoulder joint. Okay, so 120 degrees. And then 60 degrees will be by the scapula rotated. So a 2 to 1 ratio. The muscles, that is responsible for scapular rotation. So if I um, rotate in an upward direction, then it works by the upper trapezius, the lower trapezius, and the, and the main one you're called the serratus anterior. And now that will rotate the scapula. If I bring the scapula back down, it will be by the rhomboids, the levator scapulae, and the pectoralis minor. Lats will be involved a little bit because it crosses the inferior angle but we're looking at shoulder girdle muscles that control shoulder girdle motion, okay? And lat is more of a shoulder joint. So we're looking at mainly like the trapezius, the rhomboid, the pectoralis minor, uh, and the levator scapulae that will control these ones here. Now, when we initiate the motion, okay? So let's just try to bring them together, like the third element, if you like. So the initiation of abduction will be by the supraspinatus. So the supraspinatus is part of a rotator cuff. So the supraspinatus initiates abduction, but the reason why it will do that is because the supraspinatus is an external rotator, because we naturally will stand like in the anatomical position, like there, but we naturally stand like this, where the arms are internally rotated. So the super will initiate abduction and turn the arm to allow the deltoid a better angle, if you like, to initiate and to continue the motion. Super will initiate, but deltoid is naturally involved with that. After around 30 degrees of abduction, the scapula starts to rotate by the serratus, upper trapezius, and lower trapezius. So there's a continuation of motion. Now, as the arm approaches 60 to 90 degrees, it naturally starts to potentially impinge. Okay, hence the term impingement syndrome. To prevent impingement, the infraspinatus of the rotator cuff, working with the teres minor, turns the arm externally to move the greater tubercle away from the acromion, so preventing impingement, or at least trying to reduce impingement in the top of the shoulder. Because the subacromial space is only about one centimeter, so it's easily impinged. Okay, so the scapula is naturally rotating as the humerus is abducting, but it still can catch quite easily, so it's naturally rotated away. Now, as it crosses 90 to continue, the supraspinatus changes role now. So instead of being an abductor, it now changes to an adductor. So the supraspinatus, where it attaches onto the greater tubercle, will pull the humeral head deep into the socket, working with the subscapularis. And the subscapularis, another rotator cuff, it's an interrotator, yes, okay, but also an adductor. But what it does, it pulls the humeral head, working with the supraspinatus. And naturally, the scapula is still rotating as we are lifting our arms over our head. And naturally, on the reverse, depends on 
if I'm just lowering my arms down, obviously the reverse is happening, but if I physically pull my arms down, like a lat pull down, then that's where we would engage the rhomboid muscle, the levator, the pec minor, and naturally the adductors of the shoulder joint, which is mainly the latissimus with the teres major, and also the sternal fibers of the pecs, and subscap would be involved with that as well. So there's a little discussion about scapular humeral rhythm, where the scapula, the shoulder girdle, works in conjunction with the glenohumeral joint, and it works on a two to one ratio. So for two degrees of abduction, we have one degree of scapular rotation. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and thank you.